Hello, welcome to this episode of A Creative Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Poirier-Brody. My guest today is Lynn Grievison. Those of you who follow my scrapbook career know that I love using Lynn's designs for digital pages. Lynn herself is a scrapbook storyteller, as well as a designer, and that may be a clue as to why it's such a pleasure to use her products. I'm glad you're joining me to hear her story. Speaking of stories, the publisher of my last guest's book, Carolyn Preston's The War Bride Scrapbook, sent me a couple of copies of the book. If you visit the contact page on my website, www.acreativeapproachpodcast.com, or if you are or become a member of the Creative Approach Facebook group and leave a comment at either site, the website, or the group page, I will draw among the responses for a winner of a copy of the book. Your entry must include a valid email address so that I may contact you about the mailing details and must be in by March 31st, 2018. Just to fill you in since I last spoke with you, I was home only a couple of days before I left for Florida and the PodFest Multimedia Expo. It's one of the two podcasting events I attend yearly. It has become a significant event for indie podcasters, yet maintains a warm community atmosphere. It's always wonderful to learn more about the industry and the hardworking and dedicated persons behind the voices. Florida was lovely. At times, it was sunny and otherwise was just a bit overcast, but still very perfect weather. I spent a relaxing afternoon by the Gulf Shore before returning home, which was just delightful. Nevertheless, it's good to be back home for many reasons, one of which is to produce my podcast and engage guests in conversations about their creative lives. Join me in conversation with Lynn Grievison as we discover her creative approach. Hello, welcome to a Creative Approach podcast. Hi there, Lynn. Hi. We're calling to New Zealand today. Yes, I know. It's quite amazing, isn't it? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And you're getting into fall now, right? Well, it's still the middle of summer. Yeah. Um, so we kind of get our hottest weather in February. Ah, um, so, like our August, yeah. yeah. My cousin lives in uh, Melbourne, Australia, so I have to keep. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm looking at all the posts and everyone enjoying the lovely weather down there. Her okay. parents, of course, live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, which it's a wonderful thing to leave there this time of year and go visit her. But <laughs> yes, it would be that would be quite the contrast. And Melbourne can get actually really quite viciously hot. Yeah, they've been traveling here. all over, but yeah, we here in Sacramento we don't get such terrible extremes of cold, though we do get the hot, but that's a number of months off, thank goodness. (laughs) So, Lynn, um, I am very anxious to talk to you today because, and excited, now, because I don't know you that well, although we work together on the creative team at Get It Scrap, and I am one of your biggest fans. (laughs) I love to use Lynn Grievous and Designs in my digital scrapbooking. Oh, so right. I was wondering if you, you know, that's one of the things we should get into. One of the first things I do on the show is just find out about people's lives and what it is they do. And you are a products designer. Yep, yep that's right. I am. I'm a, I'm a designer of digital scrapbook products, but I'm also a scrapbooker. And um, so probably equally, I would say. That's good. And then you design your own things to use for your own pages. Yeah. That's right. Which may be why I find them so much fun to use, because they're very <laughs> practical. <laughs> well, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, it, it is a really good sort of quality testing exercise to just see how many pages can I make with this, you know, kit or, or whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been doing it for so long. I've been scrapbooking for so long and designing for so long that uh, I sort of just, I kind of have a feel for what works for the pages I like to create for my family scrapbooks. And hopefully, if, you know, you have a similar sort of scrapbooking 
style or similar scrapbooking needs to me, then they will work for you too. But I mean, I tried to make them quite varied as well and sort of have quite a range of stuff. So how long is a long time of scrapbooking and doing digital scrapbooking? Ooh, well, I started scrapbooking when my youngest daughter was about one and she's nearly 16. So that was 15 years ago. Oh, great. Uh, and that was paper scrapbooking, which I did for about 18 months or so, I think. And then we moved countries, which we do quite a lot. And I was sort of stuck in a service department for three months without any of my scrapbooking supplies with a toddler who needed to nap, you know, through the middle of the day. So I decided it would be a good chance to teach myself digital scrapbooking, which was just starting out then. So this was about 13 years ago. And uh, there weren't a lot of supplies around. Uh, there weren't that many people doing it. But uh, I taught myself to do it. It took a couple of attempts, sort of like when I kind of shut on the laptop in disgust and <laughs> walked away, <laughs> work it out. But once it clicked, it really clicked. And I don't think I uh, scrapbooked a paper page again after my, even after my supplies arrived <laughs> from support, which is what we had been it was like, oh, okay, they're here. Well, I've moved on. <laughs> <laughs> well, and especially having a toddler around to get yes. into your stuff, <laughs> that yes. could be discouraging. I mean, I love to mess with paper and paste and things like that. But, you know, there is that nice thing of not having to drag everything out and yes. not having to have anyone disrupt it or take it off the table so we can eat dinner. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I, I'm actually in awe of people who do do paper pages, you know, because I'm quite scissor and glue challenged, I always say, because I, you know, like cutting a straight line and, and I get quite sort of stressed about not cutting things or cutting into the, the paper and doing it wrong or saving that perfect paper and not using it or sticking something down and then changing my mind. And uh, I think for perfectionists, digital scrapbooking is just wonderful because nothing <laughs> is undoable and, you know, the possibilities are endless and you use something, it's still there to be used again and that really, really works for me. Uh, but I like, I still like messing with ink and paint and things like that to make brushes and to make resources that I use digitally, but not making a whole page really works works for me. So you actually, you don't create those on the screen then? You create your brushes and things using actual products? It's, it's a mix of both, but a lot of the brushes I make are actually from me messing around with, with ink and basically, you know, getting into the kitchen and bits of paper everywhere and dribbling ink everywhere and splatting ink everywhere and things like that. Some of them I draw are based on drawings. Others are based on vintage imagery, which, you know, you then kind of uh, mess around with and, and create with. So it's, it's a mix of things, really. Now, some of the, you know, the listener may not be familiar with digital scrapbooking or what we're talking about as far as kits and brushes. So maybe we need to get draw back a little. It might be a little bit boring for folks who are digital scrapbookers. But um, I think, you know, obviously, um, you and I both work in Adobe Photoshop. I mean, I think that was one of my limitations was this digital to do digital scrapbooking and form things. I tried so hard with Adobe Photoshop Elements and was right. so utterly frustrated and it wasn't till I learned Photoshop that all of a sudden everything seemed to make much more sense and be so much easier. <laughs> it's it's funny. I, designed, I designed in Elements for about <clears throat> three or four years uh, when I first started out as a designer. So yeah, I, I actually just bought Elements for my daughter because she wants to start doing more with photography and things like this. And uh, we were trying to work it out yesterday. And, and I was surprised at how different it seems to be now from the full version of Photoshop that I use. Uh -huh. So I think they have diverged a lot more than perhaps, you know, when I was using Elements, you know, a decade ago. Yeek. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, for yeah. some people, so there are different types of software and some people find one easier than another. I mean, Adobe mm -hmm. Photoshop itself is a very powerful and yes. complicated program, but it, it seems so logical to me. <laughs> and it, it, I think it can be really intimidating though, and I think that's what a lot of people uh, get 
thrown by. And, and certainly I was surprised when I first started, like I said, with digital scrapbooking. I really did walk away and disgust a couple of times because I was like, oh, you know, just so hard. But once you've made that first page, uh, and there's quite a few tutorials out there which kind of lead you step by step through that, um, it, it kind of falls into place. And then once you, if you just keep using it, then it becomes quite automatic and you really learn your way around your software and, you know, how to do all different things. But it, it is a it is a steep learning curve. Yeah, I think that's true, that there are things that one has to learn to be able to use it but you know you do things in layers and you it once you can get your head around that some of the ideas I mean just the fact that you can make things bigger and smaller and line them up and I think they've done a lot to make the program a little more intuitive and um, you know once you master the basics you can kind of figure out the rest and there are some a lot of shortcuts that different videos online can teach you <laughs> That's right. But though I'm not very good at shortcuts, I've fallen into habits, bad habits, you know, where I kind of always done things one way and then there's oh. probably always quicker ways. But Yeah, yeah th that's true. But, uh, you know, the one thing is if you have a routine, and the, there's a lot of different ways you can approach how yes. to do something, yes, which probably, <laughs> you know, it, it, that's another thing I like about uh, the Photoshop mm -hmm. itself is just so... I can do it my way. <laughs> and maybe it does involve three or four more steps than somebody else might, but uh, <laughs> it still is fun. And then, of course, a kit, this thing that you're talking about that you design, is going to have things that will go into those layers that make a page that can or cannot look like a paper page, um, but involves things like a paper, um, flowers, or pieces of ephemera or things that would you could attach, stamps, stitches, all kinds of things that you could, you know, that anyone's dreamed up of having on a scrapbook page you can use. And then you assemble some together that designers make kits of, with various themes and ideas and colors. Hmm. Yours are often very nice. Well, you use, uh, I have a few bright colored kits from you that are pretty intense, but you use a lot of soft colors that I like. Mm, yeah, I think I used to do more sort of soft and muted colours, but one of the fun things about the place where I sell now, which is the Lily Pad, which is the store where you, lots of different digital designers sell all sorts of different products, they do a monthly thing where all the different designers can design using the same colour palette so that basically all the different things, you could buy one thing for one design and one for another and they all would work together. And a lot of the palettes are quite bright uh, and bold. And initially, I was like, Whoa, I can't, I can't work with that. <laughs> it's quite sort of confronting for me because I've always been a very muted, soft, you know. But uh -huh. now it's really fun. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I know. Fun. Once I kind of got over that mental kind of leap and actually really fun to scrap with too. Uh, well, mm. I think so. I, I've um, used uh, was it. Hot, hot, hot. That's a, oh, that's yes. a right one. Yes, that's and, and then I did the one that, well, that one isn't really new, but the railroad one had a railroad oh, yeah. theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, and that's yeah. pretty, in, I don't, it's just rich colors, um, hmm. kind of bold because there's yellow in there. Mm. But yeah, primary colors, right, I think. Yeah. And that. But yeah. yeah, so they're different color stories and different kinds of themes. Um for those who are not scrapbookers, <laughs> you can get things that have to do with uh, a sort of sense of a season or a type of theme like we said railroads and things related to that. So that's just really fun. And so what was it having a child that inspired you to start scrapbooking? Where did you get into this hobby? Well, it, it was. Well, actually, funny enough, I sort of did scrapbook for my older daughter, who's in her 20s, without really knowing what I was doing because what I would do for her sometimes if we went on a big trip, um, we were living in England and I would often come to New Zealand, which is where her, or Australia, where her grandparents are. And so I would make extra copies of the photos back when, you know, you had to take your photo to be developed <laughs> and you'd get back the packet of photos. And I would order an extra packet and then I would stick those into a 
basically like a scrapbook, you know, a paper scrapbook, a paper exercise book. And I would write the story so that she, we could read it to her as a story of what she had done. So, you know, uh, we saw Nana and we went to pick strawberries and, you know, we had the strawberries with ice cream, you know, and all like basically just tell the story of what had happened, which is scrapbooking. Yeah. Just very basic. <laughs> Pictures and a story. <laughs> Absolutely. Might be minus a title or... <laughs> yeah. So then when my youngest daughter was born, we were um, we were still in England. We were living just outside London. And I can vividly remember that I was reading a paper. I can't remember which paper it was. It might have been The Guardian or something. I think it was the weekend edition. And they had an article about this craze that was sweeping the United States for scrapbooking where people would make pages with their photos and, you know, tell stories. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that's what I used to do, you know, mm -hmm. from daughter. But it sounds, you know, like you can be really creative with it. And, and the idea just stuck in my head. And uh, when my youngest was, uh, just before she turned one, we actually moved to Singapore. And uh, I had quite a lot of free time because we were living this sort of rather for once and for a very short time, this very sort of posh expat life, you know, where you had help <laughs> in the house and you lived in this lovely condominium with a pool and it was all very, you know, so I was like this lady of leisure, though I was actually <laughs> I was still doing a little bit of work on live for my old company in London, but basically I had a lot more time than I'd ever had before in my life. So I thought I'm going to look into that thing that I, I read about, that scrapbooking thing, and I discovered that there was a, a bookshop in Singapore that was actually catered to um, expats, you know, people from America who were living in Singapore, which had a couple of books about scrapbooking, which I bought, and some papers, and that was it. I was, I was away. <laughs> and then when you started doing the digital, uh, was it just the fact that there weren't a lot of products or things that didn't really speak to you that inspire your designing? Or is this just your background uh, and that was just a natural? How did you get to that? Uh, well, that was a bit of a surprise, really, because I didn't, I certainly didn't intend or expect to go down that line because I've always earned my living with words and not with pictures. Oh. Um, because I've always worked as a uh, writer, editor, um, journalist, etc. And I didn't think that – I didn't have a lot of confidence in my own sort of creativity, I don't think, initially. But I really liked – what drew me to the early digital pages was I really liked the way they looked like – magazine layouts or you can make a page that look like a magazine layer and to me that was really appealing which is funny because I've kind of moved away I mean a lot of what I do is not kind of that clean sharp lines because I love just slapping stuff on and playing with colors and you know <laughs> flowers and paint and everything but I, I really kind of wanted to do some pages that had that you know really sharp kind of editorial sort of look and uh, and then I discovered that there were some stores that were starting to sell things online, some of the very early ones, and that was fun. And then I was asked by uh, Katie, who uh, set up Designer Digitals, if I wanted to be on her creative team because I'd started posting at 2Ps. They had a digital gallery, and it was a really nice, very small community there. And uh, I was quite isolated because we'd moved back to – New Zealand, which is where my husband is uh, from. I lived, I've lived all over the place. It gets quite complicated. So yeah. anyway, we were in New Zealand, and I didn't. We were in a living in a city where we hadn't lived before. I didn't really know anyone. I wasn't working. I had a toddler who was quite unique. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and so it was really nice to have this online community and all that was quite new, that idea of actually, you know, meeting people online and it all seemed quite strange and, you know, but uh, I got into that and through that I started posting some of my pages on online at 2Ps and so Katie invited me to be on her creative team, which is where you get product from a designer, just like a creative team for a paper scrapbooking company, you get the product for free and then you create pages with them and share them and 
this case online, but also magazine submissions, things like that. And uh, I think I did that for about a year or so, and it, it was wonderful, and it was a really lovely community there. And But I just found that I was sort of playing with creating, like altering stuff, you know, to work with my photos or thinking, wow, if I had a paper that was like this or and just playing around, I started playing around and I thought, oh, I've made I've made a, a scrapbook paper or, you know, like, <laughs> oh, I've, I've made a, a scrapbook tag, you know, like it just kind of happened organically. I wasn't, I didn't set out to teach myself to design. It just kind of happened just playing and like, oh, oh, that's really cool. And uh, so, yeah, so that's that's where it all started. Yeah, well, I think, you know, you do some of that. Uh, something you said earlier about being like the organized page for a magazine or something like that. And I think that's one of the reasons I like your designs in the paint stuff. It's mm-hmm. not so crazy wild that I feel I can't deal with it. It's like <laughs> it's something that would fit very nicely on a page. So you're coming at it less from a more practical view, I think, than some yeah, artists yeah. people do yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean it's very artistic you have beautiful <laughs> designs but <laughs> i can tell there's that spirit of well this will work <laughs> yes. and i can yep. use it it's just about like i'm always using i don't think i've got any product in the store that i haven't used myself you know sort of. yeah and and but it shows and it makes it for those of you know, like me, who like to make my pages look a little bit more orderly. I mean, I love those little lines that help you line everything up in Photoshop that <laughs> they came up with like two editions yep. ago in, in uh, Creative Cloud or two or three back. <laughs> I love them. I love to line things up. I love things to be somewhat orderly. Yeah, but that pink line appears and you go, oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> funny the things that, that make us so pleased but, but there is something about you know I think your designs are very workable and that's why I'm such a fan and I use them a lot it's really fun to do and, and you use a lot of like little prints and um, mm-hmm. things that seem to be a lovely background for things that I do with my pages I think the pages I get most compliments on are ones I use Lynn Grievous and designs that's right. <laughs> so that's really fun yeah. and so now, you did you have any background at all in art? You said you had writing background, but is this something that you just had a, a knack for, or had you done anything to develop this talent? No, I mean I have I have since I've done sort of some did some training years back, and you know I've sort of kind of done a little bit of photography training stuff like that. But no, initially I didn't have a, a background in it at all, and I quite often think about. Um, I can't remember, I think is it Malcolm Gladwell, but someone wrote a book that this theory that if you do something for 10,000 hours, you become pretty much, you know, a proficient or even an expert at it. And I I would hate to add up how many hours I have spent. (laughs) (laughs) It would be a lot more than 10,000. It would be, yes. Uh, So I think just the amount of time and just – kind of I don't have to think anymore. Everything is just uh, quite, you know, it just happens quite organically and that's that's really good. But no, it's it's a surprise to me. But it's something that I've always wanted to do. I mean, I always thought, gosh, I'd really like to get more into photography. I'd really like to sort of do something more creative. And I think I've always had a sort of quite a strong visual sense. I've always sort of um, studied, I studied, history of art and things like this. So this is just a side passion (laughs) that you're scrapbooking. This is is the major passion, really, yeah, (laughs) in terms of of time and in terms of um, kind of its its importance, it would definitely be 70%. Ah, Yeah, and then the other stuff is, yeah. yeah. It's just extra. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I take, uh, well, no, I, I work as a photojournalist. Ah. Uh, which is really, really exciting and, you know, yes. fun. Um, and then I do some sub-editing, financial sub-editing and political sub-editing as well, which is less than the Well, it's pretty journal. diverse. <laughs> yes. And then last year I was doing a bit more writing again, but I pulled back on that because, uh, yeah, I just want to spend as much time as I can on the, the designing. Yeah, well... I'm- 
I, I have diverse interests too, <laughs> but and, uh, none of them involve a job. But <laughs> except, well, I get you know they're all jobs. You have you make a commitment yes. when you're really interested in something. You put the energy and effort, and and you try and learn things. I mean, I go to school all the time to learn things yeah. about um, art and craft, and um, you know keep up my medicine skills and whatever, even if I'm not actively doing a lot of that at the time. Yeah. Um, just, well, I'm a lifelong learner, but <laughs> it, um, that it's probably, me. Yeah. yeah, that probably is my job. But <laughs> the, <laughs> um, um, as far as designing and scrapbooking, I mean, the, what do you think is the biggest challenges you face as a designer? Um, Probably just just time, really. I mean, it it is very time consuming to create things and to, you know sort of put the kit together and do all the admin as well. And you know, there's there is quite a lot of admin that goes with it, like uploading stuff into the store and and creating all the previews and you know doing all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's really only time because um, it's it's such a labour of love for me that I don't think that uh, and photoshop like i said i mean the possibilities are endless really the creativity is is endless there's so many ways and you can do things and so many things that you can do in different and i just got so many ideas <laughs> you know, just, and then sometimes i'll just have this this thing where i go oh i can do that i could do this oh yeah and i'll have this start doing this list of you know things i want to work on and then it, yeah so it's just time basically yeah, and you do produce a lot of kits. Um, you know, you, you really are, um, you know, th there's a good choice among the products you offer. And so do you think maybe your travels and living in different parts of the world have really helped you in, in developing some of your ideas? Well, they certainly do inspire me. And one of the things that I do as well as designing kits is I make template albums, which for people who don't know digital scrapbooking, a template is basically you get a file and you can it's like a page sketch, but it's a page sketch that is layered so that you can just drag your own photos on and clip them to, you know, the spaces in the sketch where the photos go. And you can change the size if you want to move them around and then you can bring over your own papers and that. So it's, it's sort of, basically gives you what what it says it's a template for a page you can change it around if you like or you can stick to it really strictly but it just makes the whole process of creating a digital scrapbook page a lot simpler i like to say that it gives you a kind of a springboard so that you're not sitting there with a blank kind of page for want of a better word you know like a blank background and thinking okay where do i put my photos what do i what can i do with this so it just gives you a sort of a jumping off point and what i do is i create quite a lot of albums of templates which all go together so you can use them to make a whole photo book um of mostly i use them for uh, travel albums so we whenever we are traveling around a lot i will create a photo book of a particular trip or a particular place where we've been living and uh, I design these albums and and that's really and, and working with the photos just because that's when, when we take the most photos and it just gives you so many ideas uh, different colors that you need so I mean working with my own photos basically is, is a jumping off point a lot of the time because I just think gosh what I really need here is x you know and I'll Oh, so give give me it'll just give me some ideas for for papers or you know brushes that I could use. Right, and then of course if you have these kind of products available, I mean you can have templates, but if you have several that are sort of variations, they kind of go together because they have mm. a somewhat similar structure, and it helps to make a more unified appearance. So, mm. and uh, you don't have to use every little piece that's in them. So no, you can make them your own. You right. know, play. If people are photographers and want to, you know, use, um, you know, they do a lot of photography of their trips and play around on Photoshop editing their photos, they probably have a lot of the skills <laughs> that they could take a template Absolutely. and throw things yes. in and really maybe find a way to use their traditional photos in a, in a new way to make something, an interesting product, make a gift of Christmas well, presents or something. 
I mean, our family just love those photo books. I mean, my my husband's really funny. Whenever we have anyone round for, you know, sort of a, a lunch or something like this, he'll always end up going, oh, look at this. <laughs> I'm bringing them over and I'm sitting there sort of like cringing slightly. But it's lovely. <laughs> but he loves them. And, and, you know, um, my daughters will often just pull one off the shelf and sit down and start looking. And, it is, and you also relive the trip while you're creating them, which is really great as well. So, yeah, I really think if you are a photographer and you do take lots of um, photos of trips, I, you know, you can make them as simple as you want or you can really sort of go to town with them and sort of, you know, put lots of detail. And then you can just save them as a JPEG file and put them into a photo printing, you know, photo book printing thing as one file. So, you know, like a lot of people do actually make photo books, but they'll just use the templates that come with the photo book printing software um so there's another option you know so if they wanted to they could go and have a look at the um the uh, templates for photo books that you can get at the lily pad just to get some ideas of what you can do right and then you know and then if you want to get more artistic <laughs> you can go yes. over to use lens designs <laughs> and come up with uh, something that may be a little bit more artsy but not two way out. That's <laughs> like I said, yeah, I like I, using your stuff. It's very workable. So that, you know, to enhance that kind of uniform look and make something a little more interesting, a little different than somebody else's photo book. But yeah, I think they make uh, great gifts. So you started, you have been all over the world. Where did, where did you grow up? Ah, uh, well, I was born in England uh-huh. and then uh, my parents, uh, My father had a choice. He could go to work at a nuclear power station in Scotland or a factory, I think it was a power station in Canada, or come and work for um, a steel company in New Zealand, and he chose New Zealand. So we came out to New Zealand when I was a small child where I got picked on terribly for my very uh, broad North of England accent. (laughs) And, uh, you know, all the other children would get me to say, desk, instead of saying you know, come they'd say to the class, everybody sit down at your desk and they'd say to me, What is Lindsay? I'd say desk <laughs> So <laughs> hours of fun for everyone, my accent. So I basically <laughs> just started talking like everybody else to, to save myself. But uh, I love New Zealand but I never perhaps as a result of that teasing that I got, I never felt like a New Zealander. It never felt like this was my place, you know. So as soon as I could, I went back to England um, when I was just out of, actually, I think I was still just out of my teens. And uh, basically ever since then, I've kind of gone back and forth and back and forth between England and lived in Australia for a while because uh, I turns back to um, New Zealand. I ended up marrying a New Zealander who is very much, his family has been here for generations. He is very much a Kiwi, as they say here. Yeah. And uh, this is his, you know, this is basically, this is where he wants to be. He hates London. I, I mean, who hates London? <laughs> who oh. hates London? It's great. <laughs> so, yeah, the kind compromises. I mean, one of the good things about marrying him, and I, I wouldn't say this is one of the reasons why I married him, no, sure, surely not. Was that his career meant that we did actually end up working around the world? And now it's, he's a lot more based in New Zealand through the year, so we do tend to spend, you know, the bulk of the year in New Zealand. But uh, we Such do travel a, lot. a beautiful place. I mean, if you need inspiration <laughs> for art, New Zealand <laughs> is the way. I mean, I'm, I spent a lot of time <laughs> down in the. the South Island, and uh, I love all the little microclimates that New Zealand has. And, oh, it definitely you know, does. Yes, they can minutes, be mad sometimes. Pardon me. Oh, yeah. Well, twenty minutes to go from <laughs> subtropical to yep. subarctic. It's quite amazing. <laughs> well, actually, it's even worse than that. Our house is on top of a, a hill, uh-huh. and if you look out in one direction, we'll look out towards the south coast, and then if you look out of uh, the other direction you look out over the city and the house is it's, it's an old cottage but it's been knocked through so it has uh, windows at one end french doors at one end and windows at the other and just one lo- big long space so literally you can stand in the kitchen if you look in one direction it is pouring with rain gray 
miserable, utterly foul weather, you turn, you spin around, you look in the other direction. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's, <laughs> it's oh my! Sunny. Yeah. It's just, so what, but, wherever your mood takes you is where your gaze yeah. can go. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, very interesting. <laughs> And, it was very New Zealand. Four seasons in one day, they say, but it's actually four seasons in one spot sometimes. <laughs> it, yes. Well, I mean, it's it's incredible the way the climate is there and, and just that, that whole thing of from one short distance you can experience so much. But um, it is it's such a beautiful land and, and uh, lots of sheep. <laughs> and cows. And yes. cows. But lots of sheep. <laughs> I was there in the springtime, you know, with all the lambing. Oh, and, the lamb. <laughs> yeah, in the, you know, September, October or whatever, yeah. And <laughs> so I so enjoyed that. Yeah. But um, it's been a people say, oh, it's so green. You say, like, yes, and that's because it rains a lot. <laughs> so it does yes. rain an awful lot. But it's a very safe place mm-hmm. um, to be. And sometimes it's quite nice to be. Uh, at the end of the earth and away a little bit from, from everything. So yeah. it's nice to get option. That's an interesting place to live. And then, well, in all these travels back and forth, um, so you said you studied, but mainly I would assume it was literature, although you said you did art history. Um, so in your sort of basic training and education, you got a degree in things to do with uh, um, writing or photography? Well, or I did, a, I did an arts degree, but um, it was mostly uh, English and history. Mm-hmm. Was some art history as well, and then um, I sort of did photography later, and then I did um, a journalism postgraduate journalism, uh, which is where I met m- my husband. So I, I basically I did the um, the BA arts degree, and then I went over to London, but it was right in the middle of um, the worst recession they'd had for generations and Margaret Thatcher was in and slashing things left, right and centre and I had plenty of work but I couldn't get a permanent job. I was just, you know, Mm -hmm. going for... So I decided that I would come back to New Zealand and um, get a a journalism uh, qualification Uh, and I worked in television over here and... uh, and then uh, that was, and so doing the uh, journalism qualifications where I met my husband, and then uh, I was in the parliamentary press gallery, which is what they call the press corps. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, then we moved to Australia for his work, and that's when I had my first daughter. So since then, I've kind of been. Yeah, juggling work and motherhood and, you know. Yeah, sort of. well, how is that being, you know, I mean, there are a number of people who are working mothers who are trying to balance their career and their motherhood and then do something creative and artistic. Um, of course, some of your work is actually very creative, but um, do you find that a, a real challenge? Uh, yep. Yeah. Possibly when they were younger, but also, too, I think that doing the design and the scrapbooking is such a great creative outlet that it's a really good thing to do when you've got small children because it's something you can actually do at home and it takes you out of yourself in a way. Um, And you feel like you've actually got something to show for your day at the end of the day if you've created something instead of just spending your whole day kind of cleaning up and firefighting and cooking meals, etc. It's really nice to actually create something, have something you say, look, I made that. <laughs> At the end of the day, in between doing all those other things. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. But yes, it's nice to come up with a product at the end of it. <clears throat> um, so uh, did you have any sort of major influences, you think, on your life, or was it just all circumstance? Um, hmm. No, I think it was mostly circumstance. I think, I mean, study, studying art history and stuff like that sort of obviously opens your mind up to various creative influences and the idea of creativity and everything. Uh, but um, no, I'm kind of quite surprised, really. I don't think I would have, I think if you'd told me um, 30 years ago that this is what I'd be doing, 
to earn a living. <laughs> I just laughed. You know, and I said, really? But the whole concept of selling things that don't really exist, you know, like over the over. <laughs> yeah, virtual <laughs> products, right. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, incredible, really. <laughs> yeah. So not something you dreamed about as a little girl. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I think um, the photojournalism possibly wouldn't have been a surprise, but I'd be really pleased about that because, um, you know, I kind of always was fascinated with um, the thought of photography and everything. But, uh, I mean, digital photography has made it just so much more accessible um, for people who want to, um, you know, I mean, gone are the days when you had to have your own dark room and, you know, be messing around with chemicals and all that sort of stuff and paying for film. Oh, so, yeah. it's, you know, oh, yeah. And that would limit some of pe- many people's access to being able to do images. It's And uh, visual storytelling is just, you know, I, I love to read the written word, but you know, the whole idea of having pictures. I was just talking with uh, Carolyn Preston, who's done the scrap, invented a genre of scrapbook novels. And uh, it's really, um, you know, it adds something very enriching to uh, a story to have photos. So, um, and I would imagine photojournalism. I mean, I, I took a class in that. I'm not no expert, but <laughs> one university class in photojournalism. But it does. I think it really helps with when you're telling your own personal story. You know, to to have that whole thing of like the close up, the detail, the the mid range shot, and then the the sort of setting the scene, big uh, picture kind of um, gives you a perspective on how you might want to frame your um, own personal story. Well, that's one of the things we love about traveling is just to actually do that. I mean, we, you know, I, I take so many photos when we're traveling, but I will always do that. I will sort of take the sort of, like you said, you know, the, the distant shot and I'll get all various close-ups of little details. And, you know, so it's it's all about creating almost a collection of photos of a place or an event just to give you lots of different options that you can use when you're telling that story later. I think that's a good tip for people in general to think about when they're taking their travels or just even in their ordinary everyday life to maybe think of those points and think a little bit like a photojournalist uh, to tell your own story because it really enriches the experience to look at things from those different um, points of view. Mm, that's right. And just it's sort of a, it focuses your mind on looking for little, little telling details, you know, and that's great too because I think you – although sometimes it's quite nice not to have the camera and not to be sort of, you know, looking at somewhere through a lens, actually I think, especially when we're traveling, it, it's, it really sort of adds another dimension to me because I am looking and scanning, you know, and looking for little, little things that uh, catch my eye and which are unique to that place. And you have a very good eye because you come up with some really cool stuff, like I said, in your design. So I, I'm just like, you know, a total fan if people haven't guessed that by now. <laughs> so, But you, you'll probably notice that in the credits if uh, you look at my web page and um, look at my the uh, scrapbook pages I post there. There might be El Grievous and um, credits written underneath <laughs> a number of I things love, I do. I love seeing your pages and I love seeing you know what you've done with with my stuff. It's always a real treat. And, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't think you realize actually how you know wonderful it is for for designers to see you know what people have made with their with their designs. It's uh, you know like I said, it's always a real real thrill to see that you know oh look somebody's used that and so it's like you've sent it out into the world <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's probably a shock sometimes too yeah. to see what <laughs> what, what got associated with your design yeah. but <laughs> yeah <laughs> but still kind of fun. Well, I usually end my interviews with folks um, talking, asking them a little bit about their general thoughts about creativity. And so I was wondering if you had any ideas or things you wanted to say on the subject. Mm. Well, that's a, I think basically uh, my take on it is that what I was saying earlier, which is that it's actually, I mean, in today's world, I think that, Everything happens so fast. You can spend hours of your day just 
and realize I've just been on the internet kind of flicking from one thing to another and it just feels like time is slipping past. And uh, I think that's why creativity is so important for everyone is because you are actually making something. I mean, that's what the word means is, is to create. And so to actually have brought something into the world that, you know, and just to have that time spent just making something is so important. So I think that uh, people who create, you know, they've got a lesson for all of us. And I wish more people would uh, would learn to, you know, learn something, whatever it is. doesn't matter what it is. I mean, my dad loves, you know, making furniture. Um, so he gets bits oh, of old wow. furniture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. And he puts, you know, paints them and distresses them and things like this. And, you know, it's just so important to him, I think, to feel that he is still creating something. You know, he's not yeah. just spending his time filling in time, just, you know, sort of. But there's uh, a result at the end of yeah, his process. that's right. And, it's, mm -hmm. it's, and it is. Like I said, it's about the process as well. It's yeah. about just enjoying making something. And and if people are interested in the, the idea of, of making things with their photos or, you know, telling their stories using photos, then I really think digital scrapbooking can be just as satisfying as I mean I like I said I found creating with paper and glue quite stressful <laughs> because <laughs> I'm a perfectionist and I would just get quite tense about you know the whole process and digital scrapbooking is just very satisfying and if you can spend enough time to learn the program even though at first it seems like really hard work and you have to think about everything and very frustrating it will click if you spend enough time and it will become automatic and it feels just like creating with you know something yeah. non-digital yeah it pen paper scissors glue i mean you yeah. can make it actually look just like that it does and but also to the feeling it gives you that feeling of what they call flow where you just right. lose yourself in the process it it happens um with digital as well and you just have to give yourself time and just be patient and just to sort of you know i think i think people do find it really challenging people think oh my god i'm so stupid why can't i pick this up but i think everyone feels like that at first it is you know quite difficult to pick up but if you do give it that time you will reach the point where you can do what you want to do without having to think about every step and it's very satisfying and there are a lot of good classes i mean in person and online that aren't very expensive to get you going so and uh, huge videos and yeah. yeah lots of good things that way well I think we should tell people where they can find you. I mean, we have mentioned Get It Scrap, but <laughs> why don't we um, – I know you have a website. Yes, I do, which is just lynngreveson.com. Okay. We'll direct people there in our show notes. And, of course, Lynn and I are both on the creative team over at Get It Scrap, which is a good place to find out about how to tell your story in scrapbooking, mm -hmm. one of the resor many resources that are online. Anything else? Uh, no, I mean they could they could always pop over to the lily pad as well and have yes. a look at the gallery there for some ideas and there's all sorts of different designers there with various different styles and uh, yeah there's there's just inspiration galore out there right um, just as well and obviously. your store so <laughs> with all your wonderful products <laughs> yeah, which is at the lily pad which is the dash lilypad dot com right we'll include that in the show notes too of course <laughs> well it's been a real pleasure talking to you today. You getting too. to know you better. <laughs> yes, Thanks exactly. for joining us. Yeah, it's great. Sorry about the various bings and bongs. My husband has set up all sorts of alerts for uh -huh. his <laughs> work. Well, I, with, and I, was like, ah! yes. I think all of us who uh, have computers are familiar with that. <laughs> so very good. Well, lovely to talk to you. You bye -bye too. Now. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you for listening. Show notes from today's episode of a Creative Approach podcast, where you can learn more about my guest, Lynn Grievison, are available on the webpage www.acreativeapproachpodcast.com. Please join our Facebook page and the Creative Approach Facebook group page, too, 
where your questions and feedback on the show are welcome. Affiliate links to our show are at a Creative Approach Podcast website. On our podcast page, you'll also find a Patreon tab where we welcome donations. Thanks so much to my Patreon donors for their contributions to the show. I also welcome you to subscribe to a Creative Approach podcast on your favorite podcast platform, which for most of you is Apple Podcasts. Thanks again for listening. Please join in future conversations where I hope you will find inspiration to make things, tell your story, and explore a creative approach to life.